Hello, 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 friends. Welcome to another episode of My Life Experiences. My name is Wezi Nyaniwa Sosola, your usual host. If you are new to this channel, this is a platform where we share life experiences with the hope that someone may listen, be inspired, and learn from these experiences. Yes, friends. Today, I just want to respond to one or two issues that have been making rounds on the internet. Yeah, so um, it's been a concern of mine for quite a while, but it's only now that I've got my courage to address these issues and just put my two cents in um so if you were born somewhere before the 2000s you would be exposed to a very famous televangelist uh, charismatic man of god known as benehin benehin was very famous in the 90s in the 80s in the early 2000s in the 70s i'm not sure it was before my time but he was a very famous charismatic um televangelist he traveled the world over uh he's also traveled to africa before uh he was also famous for his prosperity gospel and he had in unconventional ways of raising finances for his ministry he was also well known for his uh for his uh healing ministry miracles ministry and there are so many people who have testified um to being impacted by his, the ministry of Benehin, by the way of healing, by the way of miracles, by the way of giving their lives to Jesus Christ. In so many ways, he really, it was a household name. Yeah, so there are so many things that have been talked about him, his unconventional ways of raising finances. Uh, he's got so many accusations um, about that and other sins that he apparently he committed. He's also gotten so many accusations about that. And the people are also saying that he never repented from whatever sins that he had committed. I mean, people have made some podcasts, very long podcasts, um, four hour podcast, one hour podcast, just trying really to, they say, to expose uh, Benehin for, for his sins and for his non repentance and for his fake ministry. That's what they claim uh of course i'm just reporting on what they claim yeah so these are the accusations that benehin ministry has been receiving and i also want to talk about uh, ravi zacharias he's also very famous uh, man of god uh, especially with his uh, apologetics ministry he was a very famous apologist um he had a ministry known as the ravi zacharias international ministry if i'm not mistaken and um he's transformed a number of lives he's taught a number of people he's mentored especially by the way of apologetics defending the christian faith i also learned a lot from him uh, on how to present the gospel to people of different faith uh, i've learned quite a lot but apparently he had also some secret sins which were exposed after he had passed on after he had passed on so really people talked about these sins they have talked about and that's all that they are remembering about this great man of god I would like also to talk about the Hillsong ministry. Uh, this ministry of music has been around for quite a while. They have made their impact. They have sung songs and these songs are still impacting Darlene Zesh and all the worship leaders in the Hillsong. And every time I listen to it again and again, and it's really life transforming music. And they have also been crammed with a number of accusations as well to the sins, whatever sins that they have done i didn't take time to listen to those things scenes but it, believers have talked and talked about the hillsong music how sinful uh, they've become and so many things really i just also want to talk about the bethel music i think even the elevation music uh, these are more contemporary musicians but they have also come under attack uh, of course the music is very good they have really impacted lives with the music uh, the gospel of jesus christ but they have also come under tremendous attack from the believers community and i have to stress the the attacks that these people are facing and not coming from outsiders it's not coming from non-believers but these attacks are coming from inside the believers communities it's the christian themselves who make podcasts for our podcast and our podcast talking about and um, trying to expose the fellow believers what happened to looking out for your fellow believers what happened to looking out for their faith and encouraging and strengthening them if we've got issues as a christian ministry the bible tells us how to address um any uh, differences any sins that are around matthew 18 um, verse 15 uh, which says 
Moreover, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone, privately. If he hears you, you have gained your brother. But if he will not hear, take with you one or two more, that by mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. So they're just talking about approach your brother privately. He doesn't hear you. Uh, tell two or more people so that maybe by word of two he may listen. If he doesn't, uh, tell the um, church yeah, or whosoever in the Christian community. But no, we have stopped this good approach that have been advised to us by our Lord because these are words in red. They are in red. You see? This word is in red. This is a word from Jesus Christ himself who was teaching us how to handle conflicts in the believers community. But we are now here making four hours, an hour, two hours podcast just revealing um, the mistakes of other believers. I believe that as be they are all human beings. We are, Bene Hinn is a human being. Ravi Zagaras was a human being. Uh, Hill song worshippers are human beings. Um, elevation worship, Bethel worship, they are all human beings. They are prone to mistakes. We are still undergoing uh, sanctification. The Holy Spirit is still teaching us. We may, we may fall, but as long as we rise up and come back to the way, um, that's what matters because we need to finish the race. But if you are there just waiting for the slightest mistake that a believer may make and you amplify it, you expose it to the internet and you talk hours and hours and hours exposition of Benehin, exposition of Rabbi. I mean, this is no concern to the unbelievers. I've never heard really unbelievers taking a long time, four hours addressing issues of Christians. I've never heard. It's the believers themselves who look as, upon the slightest mistake that somebody else has made and they make an issue. It will not change anything from his followers. So what we are doing as Christians, really, we need to change. We need to change this approach to our brethren is more of tearing down, you know, to building up. People have sinned before. David had sinned. He committed the biggest sin uh, of adultery with Bathsheba. Um, he even killed the Bathsheba's husband. He lied actually by sending him to war. Battle was thickest. That's where he was told to fight. And um, Uriah, Uriah, the Hittite, was a very honest person. He carried his own message of death but he never opened it he delivered it to his commanders and later on he was killed that's what happened but david had sinned yet he's a friend of god abraham had done his haga uh, relations and what have you uh, people had done a lot of sins in the old testament so they are human beings we are not there what happened to patience with other believers what happened to giving other believers grace other than just tearing them down and exposing on the internet what is happening really is just shaming, bringing shame to the name of Jesus Christ. This is what is happening. Yeah, it's not good at all. Let's refrain from this. No one is perfect. Yeah, we all have sins. If we have issues against the brothers, let, let's approach them privately and tell them whatever the sin is. But if they decide you not know, to heed your, your rebuke, then leave it. It's between them and their God. It's not between you and them. Yeah? It's not between Benehin and you. It's not between Elevation Worship and you or Bethel Music and you. It's not even between Hillsong Music and you. It's not between Ravi Zagaras and you. Ravi Zagaras passed on. He will answer his own with his God. If he repented, he will go to glory. So it's not between you. If they don't listen and heed to you, you don't have any time. It's not up to you to be making this long four hour, two hour, one hour podcast and accusing believers. No, it's not up to you. Leave it to God. It's between God and them uh, because they have already tested the goodness of Jesus Christ. And if they decide not to not, not to pursue that, then it's their problem. You've At least you've played your part. But stop. Let's stop this uh, culture that we are really tearing the believers down, just bringing shame to the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, this is a distraction, really. It's a distraction to our main... Uh, focus as christians because our main focus we are meant to preach jesus christ him crucified the gospel huh? the forgiveness the love of jesus christ and bring people to salvation that should be our main focus um our main goal 
when we are doing everything that we are doing this is what we should be focusing on yeah let's put our focus on this bring new people to jesus christ let them know the sweetness uh, of the salvation the forgiveness that comes with salvation that you give them peace that you transform their lives that you remove their addictions and um, they will live at peace with god forever that's what we should be focusing on and talking about of course, once in a while, you can talk about something, you can rebuke, but just rebuke it mildly and not in four hours, two hours. I mean, no, no, no people, no people of God. Let's handle each other with love. And rebuke brothers privately. Yeah, we are all learning. We are all in the process of sanctification. That's what we are. Uh, that's what I wanted to talk about, my two cents in this issue. People have been um, accusing. In fact, my daughter had asked me, I was worshipping um, with the music of uh, Hillsong, and my daughter said, ah, Mom, ah, you still listen to Hillsong music, but people are saying that they did this and that. Then I said, no, don't worry about that. They are human beings. Hillsong worshippers are human beings. They are prone to mistakes, just as I am prone to mistake. I'm not a perfect person. I speak, but sometimes I don't speak right. Sometimes I don't act right, but I'm a Christian. I follow Jesus Christ. I repent when I've done wrong. I always strive to follow the steps of my Lord. So I can't stop listening to, 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 to uh, Hillsong music. It's uh, just because of some sins that we are committed at some time. If somebody also was to come and uh, see our closet what kind of skeletons may they see uh, from each and every one of the accusers what kind of skeletons would they find hmm? we are only talking about the few those who have been exposed but there are so many skeletons in people's closets so many of them so let's not act in a holier than thou way let's not do that Ah, let's nurture each other and raise each other up and protect each other as a Christian community. Uh, let's not bring shame to the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, that's what I even encouraged my daughter that no, continue listening. If it's an inspiring music, listen to it. Yeah, some other people they listen to each and every word just to critique each and every word of a music. If somebody said, Fill me up, God, Fill me up. what does it mean? Fill me up, God. No. That's not godly. That's not godly. If somebody says something else, I'm here today to do this. No, this is not godly. This is not a biblical. This is, they look at each and every word, each and every sentence, each and every stanza of a song just to find a mistake for the sake of finding a mistake. <laughs> Friends, if you are not being edified with some songs, just say, ignore it, ignore it and sing the songs that are edifying to you. Yeah. So brethren that's what i had for you today i just want to close by reading first peter 5 verse 2 shepherd the flock of god which is among you serving as overseers not by uh, compassion but willingly not for dishonest gain but eagerly if you are doing the work of god do it eagerly do it willingly uh, not for not by compassion uh, not for dishonest gain but we should save as overseers willingly willingly shepherding the flock thank you so much friends if you've got any comment about this what are your thoughts on the way believers have been rebuking other believers have you been rebuked before what are your thoughts in general about this just share with me in the comment section below if you've got a different opinion if you think we should continue doing this just tell me i'm open to comments i'm open to correction here i am yeah thank you so much friends don't forget to like don't forget to subscribe don't forget to share Thank you so much. God bless.